these entitled parents deny their daughter her right to sleep. But she's got one trick up her sleeve to get back at her entitled family. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamp show. My parents divorced 27 years before this happened. It's always been civil on my dad's side of things. He had custody of us three kids and never said a bad word against our mum. My mum, however, blamed every negative thing in her life on him and or my stepmother. I moved to England from Australia and ended up marrying the man I moved with. Coming from Australia, my whole ginormous family was coming to the wedding, excluding the woman who is now ex-stepmother. Chalets were booked, everyone happy and excited. With my whole family coming, brothers, sisters, their parents and children, aunts, uncles, etc., we'd all agreed to book in the same place and have a bit of holiday family reunion. This place happens to have its own little pub, run by two friends of ours. We spent the week sightseeing, doing wedding prep and playing in the snow, a novelty for Australians. The first and likely last time they'll see it. Night before the wedding, we all decide to have a meal at the bar. Whole place is practically booked out with our group, so our mate running the place is quite happy. We all eat, drink and be merry. Stories are told, laughs are had, many at my expense, as I'd been vehemently anti-marriage as a child. My whole aim in life as a child was to be a maths teacher in the army. Poor me. Not only am I terrible at maths, I also hate being told what to do. So this dream was always going to fail. Given that we were all heading to the wedding venue the next day, most of us retired at a reasonable hour. Husband-to-be and I merrily hiccuped our way to our chalet, singing Land Down Under with my sister and her fiancé, who were in the chalet next to us. And now we lay me down to sleep and gosh darn it, who the frick is calling at this time? It's about four hours later, two in the morning. My mate from the pub is calling and said we should probably come down there. I shove coats and boots on my pajamas and set off. I get there and there is my dad, doing his best to avoid my mum, who has decided that this is the moment. What moment you ask? This is the moment she and my father get back together and all the wrongs in her life are righted. She was drunker than that feral pig who broke into a campsite, drank three packs of beer and tried to fight a cow. Dad didn't want to leave her at the bar alone, but he also didn't want to walk her back to her chalet and have her get the wrong idea, so he'd asked my mate to call me. I try and unwind her arms from him. She shrieks at me. Dad takes the opportunity to run away and I'm left with her. It's only about 100 meters to her chalet, so I start to walk her home. She starts crying and telling me the following. Your father loves me still. I know it. Mum, can you just stop and think about what you're saying? It's been so long since I had a man like your father. He satisfied me more than anyone I've been with. He's gotta... Seriously? No thanks. You can stop. Willie, that just makes me tremble. At this point, I stop walking. I hold her shoulders, look her in her very drunk eyes and tell her that I do not need to know about her love life with my dad, ever. She bursts into tears and told me that I ruined it all. I ask her to explain. Apparently my wedding was going to be the catalyst for their getting back together and she was going to give this to me for my wedding present. Having two united parents to hold my hand and walk me down the aisle. She then starts shouting that it would have all worked and I had to ruin it by showing up just when she was making her move. I sigh. I sigh again. I sigh once more for good measure and then ask her if she could please, just for this week, keep her stuff tidy and calm. I remind her that I'm getting married and that I didn't really want to be standing ankle deep in the snow at two in the morning, listening to her talk about manipulating my dad into having it with her. Readers, she toddlered me. She sat in the snow, crying and refused to move until I told her that she could get back together with my father. So I left her there. I believe the snow worked its wonders on her burning loins because she didn't bother my dad again about getting back together. Tragically, it didn't stop her general entitlement. She still made her best effort at the wedding to attention seek and cause drama. 
Some people might think it's not really her fault because she had too much to drink, but if you know that that's gonna be your behavior, especially at such an important time like this, then just don't drink at all. Isn't it better to sacrifice the things that you want on such a special day so that you don't ruin it for those that you care about? I guess that gives us the answer, doesn't it? She probably didn't really care about her daughter or her wedding day. This story will revolve around my entitled sister, ES, and at the time, entitled mother, and with the special participation of, at the time, entitled dad, ED. For context, my two sisters and I used to live together in an apartment rented by the entitled parents. For us to live while we studied, my family used to pay for my college, although they hated my career and never missed the opportunity to remind me of it. That was until I basically decided it was enough and started working. Sadly, having to give up my education to help at home and gain independence. This was a huge no from them. In the words of ED, A job will give you independence, and we don't want you to have independence. But at the end, since my parents and sisters really needed the help, they ended up dealing with it, keeping the comments at minimum. I'd started working as a customer service representative, which just meant a lot of money and psychological stress. Along with some terrible shifts past midnight, I'd managed to keep the stress a minimum and pay for the internet, phone, and cable, so I thought that earned some respect coming from the Entitleds. Boy was I wrong. EM didn't see those expenses as enough and wanted me to pay full rent and buy the groceries. I was okay with buying groceries as long as my sister made dinner for me, but that never happened. And I was just spending my money on food I wasn't even consuming. Against EM's wishes, I let my sister do the grocery shopping with the money my entitled parents were sending them and was able to buy clothes and personal stuff for me. I always managed to pay and do my part regarding chores, give money for groceries if they were short, among other favors. The only conditions I had were privacy in my own room and silence while I slept. Needless to say, I got neither. I got a permanent shift that went from 6pm to 4am, and thanks to the bad transportation, I always got home past 5am. It always took an hour to fall asleep, so by 6am I was just starting to get some rest. And that is when ES wakes up. She always had an excuse to enter my room, knocking on the door if it was locked to ask for something she forgot in my room. This is almost every morning, and since EM was completely against having my room locked, I wasn't able to do anything about it. ES on top of that loved listening to energetic music, but not with her headphones, oh no, with freaking speakers. Now I tried to keep it civil and polite, asking her to please use headphones and to not enter my room when I was away. Her answers were always the same. It's only for a couple of minutes. It wasn't. I live in this house too. You can't even hear that through your door. You're lying. I tried to talk to my parents about the noise situation, and their responses were basically the same ones as Entitled Sisters. ES told me is not true. You can't hear it when your door is closed, and either way, you need to learn how to be with people and not be so uptight all the time. You need to learn to sacrifice yourself a little. You have to be a good sister and not complain so much. I felt a little defeated and tried requesting ES to turn down the volume at least. She agreed to only turning it down a little and stating that if she did it more, she will not be able to hear the music at all. This is completely false. This went on some time until it hit me to record from my bed the amount of volume that went through my closed doors. I did send the video to my parents as evidence and they ignored it completely. I was super furious and not willing to take that crap any longer. So I ranted in the family group chat about how just unfair the situation was and that I should at least get to sleep in the mornings due to me having a nocturnal job to pay house expenses. ES didn't take this well. I knew all this crap was about your contribution to the house and how do you think you're so important now? You don't even pay for food. What are you talking about? The only thing that I ask for is privacy in my room and you keep it to a quiet at freaking 6 a.m. You are the only one who has problems with it, so you have to suck it up. My other sister is a heavy sleeper, like ES, so I was alone with my complaints. 
Eas and I were always arguing about the volume, until one day, she purposely kept it loud and made fun of me for having no backup from my family with the matter. So furious, I woke up to go to work after she left for school and hid the speakers where she was not able to find them, and then proceeded to plan a weekend out. It only took a day for Eas to figure out what had happened, and called my parents to let them know what I'd done. Entitled parents immediately call me during work hours and we had the following conversation. Hello? What did you do? I hid the speakers, that way I'll be able to get some rest. How could you do this to your sister? How could I? Eas intentionally deprived me from sleeping. Eas needs to be entertained. She is bored all day. How can you be so selfish? She has internet, cables and headphone. There is no way she can be bored. But it's not the same. Give her back her speakers. No, both of us are shocked since I had never said no to her regarding a favour to my sisters. All the more reason for me to be angry. What do you mean, no? I said no. Everybody had their chance. Now this is going to be in my terms. We went back and forth until Edie screamed that he would take responsibility next time. I'm sleep deprived due to loud music. It was the first time ever my dad defended me in an argument over ES, and it was the start of his entitlement rehab. So I agreed to tell them where I hid them, but refused to go back home. I spent some days in my now ex-boyfriend's house feeling I gained respect over this. Well I did, but something even worse happened. Remember that I was not able to lock my own room before, due to EM? Well, my sister had asked my mother for a new, bigger bed for her and our other sister, and my mother sent it to her and moved the old bed to my room, turning it into a storage room where I wasn't able to sleep. They didn't even call me. I got to my room at 5am, not knowing what just happened. I couldn't sleep in it since my bed was against the wall. My sister's dismantled bunk beds were in the way, not even letting me enter the room to accommodate things. That day, I cried on the floor, feeling so defeated and humiliated. They didn't even pretend to care and let me sleep on the couch for a week. I decided to move out and never look back after that little stunt, and I have no regrets till this day. The worst part is, that wasn't the first time someone had kicked me out of my own room or didn't let me sleep, hence why I begged that in the first place. My mum and dad were entitled until I left, but they didn't manage the level of entitlement of another crazy parent I met back in the day. Maybe I'll post that one next. Sleep is a basic human right. I can't believe anyone would think that it's okay to deprive another human being of it. It's obvious that they're favoring one sister over the other. Why? I have no idea. Even if they've got some history there and there's some issues that are unresolved, that shouldn't matter. They're trying their best to contribute to the expenses and they need sleep. <laughs> you just can't keep going without it. A little context first. I live with my parents. Our house has a driveway at the back that fits three cars, but is only wide enough for single file. Because our schedules are so different, they park in the driveway and I park out front, so we don't box each other in. EM and her family live next door. They're actually tenants in a basement suite. The owner's family converted the bottom floor into two separate suites, while the owners themselves live upstairs. So, all told, the house has three families or couples, with four drivers and equal vehicles. The house also has more parking space at the rear, as none of it is backyard. Entire width of the back of the property is driveway or garage. I was heading home after running errands, and I managed to get a space right out front. At the same time, there was a van waiting behind me to pass. I parked, got out, and started walking to my front door, when I heard a woman say, Excuse me! I turned and saw a woman leaving the passenger side of the van. I said, Hi, we exchanged pleasantries. I recognized her, but we'd never actually met. And then she asked if I could not park my car there. Seeing that she had just gotten out of a van, and knowing they had two kids, I assumed she needed me to move for the time being. So I asked if that's what she was requesting. Nope. She said she needed me to stop parking there entirely. I told her I couldn't park anywhere else as I'd either have to box my parents in or take someone else's space. She pressed back, 
saying I was always in the space when she got home from picking up her kids. She also mentioned it being hard to get her kids and their stuff in or out of their van, since they usually had to park further away. I told her I was familiar with the vehicle situation next door, and asked her if she asked the owners or the other tenant if they could accommodate her. She said no. So I told her to ask, since despite there being more cars next door, they had more spaces to park cars. Then I apologized for having to leave and walked into my house leaving her talking to her husband in the van. When you moved into the place, you must have known what the parking situation was. And if not, then you're just stupid for not asking in the first place. So either way, it's on you. My guess is that they thought this was a pretty great place to stay in and they're like, yeah, we'll be fine with the parking. A few months later, hmm, let's see if we can inconvenience other people for our mistake. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.